Oh, Howdy, that sure is a lot of animal. It's about the best I've seen. Don't tell them our name's Barkley or the price is gonna go up. Well, uh, he's a looker, all right. I'll give you that, McGowan. Look here, son. Can't hardly buy an animal. A fair is that for less. If you're aiming to dicker me down... $300 and nod of your head and you got yourself a deal. $300. We'll pay for the shipping, save you the cost. I, I might consider $325. Three hundred dollars, not a penny more. Three hundred it is, then. You got the money? In gold. All right, Rodrigo, bring him out. You got a bill of sale. A bill of... About that, I feel plumb foolish. I'm fresh out. I've been doing a lot of business since I started placing ads. Well, any piece of paper with your name on it will do just fine. No, no, no. We made a proper deal, and you're entitled to a proper receipt. Wouldn't hear of it any other way. I tell you what. I'll have my foreman, Rodrigo, ride into town. He can pick up a couple of sales forms. Well, that'd be just fine, except waiting for Rodrigo to make us late for that catalog auction we're heading for. Hmm. I'll tell you what. I'll have him catch up to you on the trail with it. That'll be fine with me. And it's settled? You're very considerate, McGowan. My pleasure. <laughs> Lost him for a minute. They'll have to take the old Campbell trail. Go tell Sheriff Barnes he's got a couple of customers. Yes, sir. Better get a move on. Be right there. I was hoping I didn't hear you right. Beans again, huh? Keith, you've got a mean streak in you a mile wide. You know, I was figuring. If we can get out of that sale by noon tomorrow, be the railhead and Brazos by sundown. We can ship the old boy out from there. Well, it's pushing it a little bit, isn't it? What's your hurry? No, mostly selfish, I expect. I hear they got some good cooks and brasses. Well, what's wrong with them beans? Now, you've gone through a half a dish of yours already. You got the guts to ask me that? Just give me a cup of coffee. Help ease the pain. Well, go on, poor. I've been through drought and flood in five years. Of... Close enough for a handgun. If they're Apache, they're gonna save ammunition. If they're Apache, we wouldn't have heard them. They'll come in on both sides. Ready? Sneaking up on a man in the middle of the night, I wouldn't call that too friendly. But just that we had to be sure. Of what? That you wouldn't go to shoot. First chance you had. Now, uh, give up them guns, eh? As soon as we can see plain that you're the sheriff, 
Now you walk in real slow like and freeze your gun hand. You're being so sensible. Be a pity if men died over so little now, wouldn't it? I trouble you for those guns now. Sheriff, I got a strong feeling you're mistaking us for somebody else. Oh, no mistake. No mistake. Now, boys, we've gone this far without any bloodshed. Let's keep it that way, huh? Now, Sheriff, I'm ordering you to surrender those weapons. What is all this about? That bull you got staked out over there. Rancher named McGowan reported him stolen. Oh, he did. Well, he's lying or he's drunk or both. We paid good money oh, for you that. You paid animal. for him, did you? In gold. Oh, you got proof of that? Well, not exactly. No. No bill of sale? Well, he didn't have any on hand. Oh, come now. Man who moves as much cattle as Mr. McGowan? Well, maybe you got some other record of a deal like a back of well, an envelope. Sure hands on it. You dirty saddle tramp, you. No, no. Now, wait a minute. We've been on the trail a week, week and a half. We probably look it. But we're not tramps. We're the Barclays. Heath and Nick Barkley of Stockton, California. Your name and where you come from don't prove nothing. Now, look, we're on a cattle buying trip. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Riley, we did some business with him. I have a receipt. I him. am not interested. It's proof of what I'm saying. The one has nothing to do with the other. You can fetch up a hundred receipts if you want to. But if the name of Mr. McGowan doesn't appear on one of them, I am not interested. Huh? Rodrigo, don't fetch that bull home. Wait a minute, Rodrigo. He's McGowan's foreman. He said he would bring us the bill of sale. Was that right? Rodrigo, any truth in that? No, senor. I've never seen them before in my life. Now, I don't want to hear any more palaver out of either one of you. Get along, Rodrigo. I think you better hold it right there, Rodrigo. You all right? I think so. Now, before anyone really gets hurt, let's go. His leg. His leg needs dressing. There'll be a doctor where you're going. Now get mounted. Captain Ridley, if you'll sign for him, eh? Well, am I expected to read your mind, Sheriff? Oh, 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 they, they, they rustle the steer. They say the name's Barkley. Peterson. Yes, serial number 370 is open, sir. He died of the fever a while back. 597 is also open. Just sign them. No, 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 wait a minute. You accuse us of stealing that bull. All right, accuse us in a court of law, we can tell our side. Peterson, I don't remember giving 370 permission to speak. No, sir. Why don't you just ask a question? Prisoners do not speak without first obtaining permission. Prisoners do not argue with their superiors. Prisoners, if they wish to survive their period of confinement, Think and do exactly what they are told. How's a man to know if he can speak without getting a belly full of splinters? By requesting permission in the following manner. Sir, permission to speak. I'm sorry I asked. Take them away. Wait. Permission to speak. Sir. 
permission to speak, sir. Granted. Now, when do we get a chance to tell our side? When the circuit judge comes to town. You'll be taken there under arrest, accused of your crime, and brought back here to serve your term of imprisonment. When does the judge get here? Approximately two months. Two months? Look, putting aside the fact that this whole thing is a pack of lies, even if we were guilty, we'd be entitled to stay in the regular town jail for trial. Awaiting trial in the regular town jail, you'd accomplish no useful purpose. Well, purpose? That's our right. You dare to speak about rights? What about Mr. McGowan's right to be protected against the abuse of thieves? Nobody mentioned his name. How did you know it was McGowan's livestock? Peterson, come on. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> All present, Captain. Prepare the men for inspection. All personnel stand to for the captain's inspection. Good morning, 945. Good morning, sir. Beautiful morning, yes, sir. Nine, four, five, do you like it here? Like it here? Green fields? Trout swimming pretty in the water? All my friends around, my rocking chair. All that a man could want for. It's quite simple. He's gone into a world of his own making, a world in which he is quite happy. He does not resist, he obeys. And that is what I demand from every man here, obedience. Obedience. It's your only hope. Hope for what? To survive. Peterson. Detail. Move to the wagons. Risley. Uh, Captain Risley. The prescribed way or not at all. Permission to speak, sir. Granted. My brother, he, uh... You, you said he could see a doctor today. Well, you should have spoken up before the formation was dismissed. Now he'll just have to wait until tomorrow morning. Come 
just said tomorrow, son. There's no tomorrows here. <laughs> I'm not as loco as you boys might have thought. It's uh, just that place I go to. When being here gets to be too much. Only thing is, you know, uh, I'm liable to go there once and not be able to come back. This federal or state line? Neither. Belongs to a rancher name of McGowan. McGowan? Now it all begins to figure. His way of getting labor one tenth the price of regular hide. What little he does pay goes into Risley's pocket. Mm-hmm. And if work slows down or men die, they have to be replaced. One way or another. Didn't anyone ever break out of here? Yes. And it can work. I was here that time, too. There's something you're holding back about that time. But they didn't make it, huh? <laughs> Shut up, Billy. Shut up. Well, there's no call for that. I wasn't hurting anybody. Not hurting anybody. Keeps talking about that break a couple of years ago. Got every man scared to throw with me. Well, what happened then? Grizzly somehow got word. The first five men were cut down before they got to the gate. But I got it figured this time. When you two go along, there'll be enough of us to get it done. <clears throat> I'll wait for that circuit judge. We don't want to give him any legitimate reason to keep us here. How's the leg getting worse? Sam. Here, piece of cheese I've been saving. Oh, go on, go on. With your leg hurt like that, you need all you can get to keep your strength up. Good, thanks, Billy. prison commission was made up of men instead of snakes, they'd see to it that we had food enough to live on. Commission? You mean to tell me the prison authorities have been here and seen this and have done nothing about it? We're dirt, haven't you heard? Dirt don't deserve no better. How long you been here, Billy? I don't, I don't know. Honestly, don't know. I got no years. out in green fields again. And that when I die, it'll be someplace where, where a cool breeze blows across the land like, like the smile of a pretty woman. Yeah, but that's foolish. It'll never happen. business for a couple of days. Since when do you need a gun to go on business? All right, it's Dick and Heath. What happened? Three days late getting back from Hayesville. I sent a telegram to a Mr. Riley over there, a cattleman they did business with. He said the last he saw them, they headed off into a county where the sheriff arrests strangers just because they're strangers. He went over there and asked a few questions. Found out the two men who fit their description had been arrested. Mother will be home from Denver this afternoon. What do I tell her? Don't tell her anything. I'll send you a telegram just as soon as I know anything at all.
Doctor? Actually, he's rather a competent physician. And sober. From what I can see, that's never. I won't trouble you anymore with my leg. Trouble? And like you cause me no trouble. Well, you're quite right. There's no excuse for a professional man being derelict in his duty. The way this prison is run, he's reacting the way any other doctor would. You're making excuses for him. <laughs> he's trash. Anybody can see that. Why do you let him stay? What reputable physician would take this job? A prison is the final reservoir for the scum of this world. And yourself included? No, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. It took me 17 years to get my own ship. 17 years. Not one black mark. Not one single reprehensible incident, not one. Honorable, distinguished service. And then, then they conspired against me, my crew. My crew. They weren't men, they were pigs. Or were they men treated like pigs? Silence. I order you be silent. What really happened, Risley? Given the power to command, you weren't able to use it? Isn't that right? I said, be silent. You said it was your men. But it was you who got thrown out of the Navy. Isn't that right? Isn't that what you're taking out on the prisoners here? I ordered you silent. And you disobeyed my orders. Peterson! Get him out of here. I want him punished. Get him out. Get him out! I don't know what it's for, but it don't matter. He interfered, and it can only go worse for him. Believe me, much worse. All present, Captain. Five nine seven has been found guilty of a breach of conduct. I'll direct your attention to the administering of punishment. They seem to fit that description now, don't they? There's one way to find out for sure, isn't there? Let me see them. Oh, they ain't here. He's being held down at the farm. Now, by farm, I assume you mean the road gang. Mm -hmm. When was the trial, Sheriff? Well, there wasn't any. No trial? Well, what I mean is, not yet. When do you think it might be? Well, it 
That psycho judge will be around here sooner or later, I expect. We'll get around it sometime. When men are accused of a crime, you don't get around to trying them. Well, that's the way it is around here. I'm sorry. You denied these men a trial by jury and committed them to a road gang, and you're sorry. Where are you going? I'm going to telegraph the circuit judge for a writ, releasing those men into my custody and demand an immediate trial. Then I'm riding out to the prison. And when I get there, Sheriff, you'd better be there. <laughs> Risley? I'm Captain Risley. My name is Jared Barkley. I've come here to see my brothers, Heath and Nick Barkley. Oh, yes. Well, those were the two thieves you arrested, weren't they, Sheriff? That's right, Cap. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Barkley, but their privileges have been suspended. Not permitted any visitors. Unless, of course, you have some uh, official document overruling my authority. I wasn't able to find the circuit judge, so I don't have a writ right at the moment. Well, then things will just have to remain as they are. I'm very sorry, Mr. Barkley. You had to make that long journey for nothing. Risley, I didn't take this long journey for nothing. I refer you to the Federal Code, Chapter 8, Paragraph 12, Subsection 9. Any official, federal, state, or territorial who impedes in any manner a qualified attorney in the practice of his profession is guilty of committing a crime. Punishable by fine or imprisonment or both. Now, Mr. Risley, as an attorney licensed to practice law in a number of states, this one included, I don't have to ask you to see my clients, which my brothers have just become. I have an unqualified right to see them. <laughs> Well, the fact that you're an attorney does alter the situation. Naturally, sir, you have my permission to consult with your clients. Here, just a minute. Peterson, allow Mr. Barkley to visit his clients. Your gun, Mr. Barkley. Jared. He's very sick, Jared. How did it happen? For one thing, a burned leg, no doctor to attend it. They won't give him any good food so he can get his strength back, and they whipped him. All right. The circuit judge should be in Brazos by now. I'm going to ride there and bring him back here just as fast as I can. In the meantime, whatever you do, don't antagonize Risley. Well, I'm going to have to stop breathing to guarantee that. Nick, you're going to have to ride that horse of yours into the ground to make it back here on time. I'll make it. Peterson! Your time is up, Mr. Barkley. Hang on, Heath. It'll only be a little while longer. Hang on. Yeah. Risley? Yes, Counselor. I'll be back with the circuit judge. The California Barclays. Now, how could have McGowan been so stupid as to pick them? Well, the point is he did. We weren't much smarter waiting until now to place them. I'm forgetting out of this thing while we still can, Captain. And abandon this entire operation? Never. Well, look, these ain't saddle bums we're talking about. They're Barclays. When they talk to the judge and then after him, the prison commission, they'll be listened to. Well, they can't do much talking if they're dead.
We could never get away with that now. Murder, no. But if they attempted a prison break? You mean force them to try? How? There are ways. Many ways. Captain. Now all we have to do is wait. Your attention. Now. It'll be hot enough today to kill a man standing still. Let alone pounding rock. Therefore, there'll be no work today. After inspection, you'll return to your quarters. Peterson, prepare them for inspection. Stand to for the captain's inspection. Button your shirt. He's making it plain. In his condition, the box will kill that boy. Arms down. He hasn't had any water. Did you say something, 370? Say he hasn't had any water. Do you wish to speak? Permission to speak, sir. Granted. He hasn't had any water. Excuse me, sir, but uh, the guards are ready to leave for town. I was wondering if you could sign this order. It takes five guards to pick up one wagon load of barbed wire. That's quite a bit of wire, sir. We'll be undermanned. Very well. Provided they'll be back by morning call. Yes, sir. Now, you were saying? Captain. Please. Peterson, dismiss. You men are confined to quarters. Detail, dismissed. You can find the quarters, Barkley. chance. Take it. But what kind of a man are you? That's your brother out there and you and you don't care. Don't. Don't you ever say that to me again. We, we've got to wait for Jared to get back. All right. But while you're waiting, your brother, he could die.
Captain? I checked with Frank in town. Barkley's brother and the judge may be here sometime tonight. And Barkley still hasn't taken the bait. Bring him in here. Sit down. Aren't you going to ask me about 597? 597. Five, That's a man you have out in that sweat box. Heath Barkley, not a bunch of numbers. Aren't you going to ask me about him? Would it do any good? You're still full of your own pride, aren't you? Well, that doesn't surprise me. I know you well enough by now. We're even. I've killed enough corn pigs in my time to know enough about you. You want to kill me? I do. And given the opportunity, you'll try. I will. Well, in view of this situation, I'd say the distance between the intent and the deed may prove an impossible journey for you. I'll work it out. Oh, really? How? I don't know. Yes. Oh, yes. Patience. Patience. The way of the intelligent man. Wait until you're free, and then pick your own time. Meanwhile, of course, 597 will be dead. At this very moment, I warrant, his flesh is being burnt raw. His tongue is so swollen that it chokes him. No doubt he is gradually losing his sanity. That explains the mumbled sounds, the incoherent noise. What do you want? Tell me! What kind of a price does it take to buy you? Anything you want. Any price. But just let him out of there. There is one thing I might accept. Yes. Now, you said anything. Do you really care that much for him? Any price. Money? That's really not quite so rare a commodity. But your dignity, your precious Barclay dignity, now that does command a value. Now what is the price of your brother's life? What is the only thing, the only thing that will take that key to the sweat box and give it to you? Well, it's simple, very simple. Your dignity. Will you beg? Will you beg? From a man you hate? Will you get down on your hands and knees and beg? Men don't beg. Exactly. You're not going. What? Look, I can't take the responsibility. No, wait a minute. I can't take the responsibility of you getting killed. Now, you're going to wait here for that judge. Yeah, but you listen. Look, I have no choice. i got to get my brother out of that box. All right. 
But you'll need help. No. I can take care of that fence. All right. All right. Understand, your men are to hold their fire until the Barclays are outside, outside the wire. There must be unmistakable evidence of an escape attempt. I better get out there with them. Trap. Why? It's a trap. That swine Risley. Those guards never left. They're waiting. The other side of the fence. All right, all right. Now look. First thing we gotta do is get Heath out of that sweat box. Get back to the hut, barricade ourselves in. And pray that Jared and the judge get here on time. Come on. I should have figured you'd be around a watch. Well, your little trap didn't work. Doesn't really matter. 
Actually, I prefer you know what you're walking into. You think I'm going to go through that fence now? Oh, you are. Oh, yes, you are. You're out of your mind. On the contrary, I'm behaving quite logically. Start walking. Keep walking. What about my brother? First you and then him. Well, now you're going to need the key. You want that judge to find his body outside the fence with mine. Stop! Thank you for correcting my oversight. Now, hand me the key. Everything's going to be all right. I brought a doctor. Who's responsible for this? That's the man there, Judge. That is, if you can call him a man. around okay, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess you'll be going home now. Oh, well, well, there's going to be some changes, lots of them. For instance, right now, the, the camp has been turned over temporarily to a federal marshal. Risley, the sheriff, and McGowan will be made to answer for what they've done. And every one of your sentences is going to be reviewed. Well, uh, that's more than we could have hoped for before. Billy, you know that place you were talking about? Where the earth is rich? The breeze blows over the land like a pretty woman's smile. Well, there is such a place. And there's a job there waiting for you when you're free. You write me at this address. When it's time, and I'll come for you. Well, well. 